the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the Yukon during the gold rush of 98. That was the year that brought over 50,000 men swarming into the Klondike region, and the greed for gold led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, the force preserved a splendid record in maintaining the right. The challenge of the North was answered, and justice ruled triumphant. The cafe was warm and crowded, full of men who smelled strongly of the mixture of whiskey and tobacco. Men who'd come to the cafe to drink, swap stories, and to lose over a deck of cards the gold they'd panned in the rich Yukon Creek beds. Dirk Malone contrasted sharply with the heavy set prospectors who lined the bar. His eyes were close and narrow, his hands uncalloused. To look at him was to recognize a gambler. All right, so I've had a streak of bad luck. Yeah, a long streak. Don't forget that, Malone. That's ten thousand dollars you owe me. I'll pay it. You pay it. I'll see to that. But I want it now. I don't have it now. Well, ain't that too bad? I'll give you a week's time and no more. You'd have been better off if you'd have stayed up at the Clay Five Mine with your old man instead of moving into town. Me be a miner? Don't make me laugh. Any day I'd break my back swinging a pick. Well, that's why I left the place. Now excitement. The kind of gold he's pulling out of that mine, I'd have stuck. Your sister Molly's got the right idea. Ah, Molly's a soft-hearted fool. She'd stick by the old man if he didn't have a nugget. Maybe so. But she's a lot smarter than you are. Someday that mine's going to be hers. You mark my words. And you being a half-brother ain't going to make any difference either. You hear what I said? Yeah. Yeah, I heard what you said. Of course, there are ways of making sure that don't happen. Funny, the way our minds seem to run in the same direction. It's a mighty rich strike. Too rich to let slip through your fingers. I'm listening. Now, if you own the clay pipe, or a third of the mine, I might be willing to forget that streak of bad luck you've been having. I should have thought of this before. Instead of begging for gold a bit at a time. You can depend on this much. You'll never leave you any. You've been too much of a headache to him all along. He always thought more of Molly anyway. Mac, you come out to the cabin with me tomorrow. We we'll leave in the morning. You just do what I tell you, and you'll own a third of the clay pipe mine. Oh, Dirk, when are you going to get some sin? Now, listen. Let's not go into that again. I didn't come up here to argue with you. No, not with me. More than likely come up to argue Dad out of some more gold. I came up because I wanted to see him, that's all. You came up to see him. You never did believe me. That's what comes of being the black sheep of the family. I don't need money, see? You're always in debt. You never come up unless it's to beg him to get you out of trouble. Only this time I'm warning you. You won't get anything out of him. I don't want anything, I tell you. Where is he now? Down at the mine. Yeah, I know. Works the mine during the day and reads at night. Doesn't even have any new books around. Too bad you didn't bring some supplies with you. Could have saved him a trip to town. Huh? You didn't even hear me. I said it's too bad you didn't bring some supplies with you. You'd have saved Dad a trip to town tomorrow. Oh. He's going in tomorrow, eh? Well, that's fine. Just fine. Mac and me will ride back with him. That is, if we can bunk here on the floor tonight. Going back to town tomorrow just fits in with my plans. Sergeant Preston of the Mounted Police urged his team over the trail toward Claiborne. The merciless wind bit into the Mounties sharply, while King, his lead dog, ran ahead of the pack, breaking a trail through the heavily falling snow. Are King! Are you hot, King? Half hour we'll be in town, boy. Oh, it'll be good to get out of this storm. King, what's the matter, boy? Huh? Oh, you husky. Oh. What is it, fella? Huh? I can't 
see in the snow. All right, King, you lead the way. I'm nuzzling around the snow, I wonder. If... Why, it's someone fallen in the snow. Wait a minute. Why, it's Pat Malone. Shot. Shot in the back. Yes, King. He's dead. But who could have done it? And the snow's covered all tracks. Well, we're closer to town than we are to this cabin. Now lift him. This is going to be bad news for Molly. And as for Dirk... Well, we've got a real job ahead of us, King. We've got to find the man who shot Pat Malone. Malone. Hey, wasn't that Sergeant Preston you were talking to? Yeah. I thought you were going to meet me at the hotel 15 minutes ago. I got held up over at the cafe. What do you have to say? He found the old man. Of all the times for him to hit Claiborne. Of all times for you not to be with me. You fool. I needed you to back up my story. What did you tell him? We came into town together and left him at the general store. You didn't mention the deed, huh? What do you take me for? That'll come later. I'm going out to the cabin now to, to break the news to my sister. That's when we'll uncover the deed. I faked the signature on it last night after everybody had turned in. Even an expert wouldn't notice the difference. You better be careful about telling Molly. Careful? <laughs> this is one thing I'm really going to enjoy. Uh, you're a cool customer. I'll say that much for you, Dirk. And it took murder to bring it out. I can see her face already when I tell her. All these years she spent with Dad while he worked the mine. <laughs> How much good they'll do her now. It was Preston that found him, Molly. I can't believe it. I waited and waited for him to come back. I, I thought maybe he stopped in at the cafe or... You know he never spent much time there. No. It was always you. You were the one to spend time in the cafe. I... I wasn't going to tell you this, Molly. Tell me what? Well, you see... Have you seen the deed for the mine lately? What would I be doing with the deed? I, I guess it's up to you now to take care of it for us. You don't understand. What do you mean? The last time I was up here, Dad turned the mine over to me. You can see it on the deed yourself. What? That's right. I don't believe it. He wouldn't trust you with a poke of dust, let alone the clay pipe. It's in writing. What's more, I'm taking the deed with me. This land and the cabin's mine now. I'm willing to give you enough gold to get back to the States, and that's all. Dirk, how can you talk this way? Dad, shot and killed, murdered. And all you can think about is the mine. You never came near it while I lived. Get away from that drawer. Take your hands off me. I said take your hands off me. I'm taking the deed. I don't believe you. He didn't sign the mine to you. Oh, Dirk, please. Please, I... I know we never agreed with each other. Oh. Now that the clay pipe's mine, you're changing your tune. No. No, it isn't that, Turk. But stay here. Stay here, please. At least until we find who murdered Dad. I'm going back to town. And remember what I said. I'll see you get enough gold to get back to the States. <laughs> oh, no. It can't be true. I can't be dead. What shall I do? Preston. Dirk said Sergeant Preston found me. The first thing tomorrow morning, I'll go to him. But Molly Malone saw Sergeant Preston sooner than she expected. Shortly after daybreak the next day, the Mahi's sled pulled up outside the cabin. He listened to the story the grief-stricken girl told and was silent when she finished. Did you see the deed? No. I tried to stop Dirk from taking it, but it was no use. He, he doesn't care about anything except gold. Molly. Yes? Is this book... That's Dad's journal. He made an entry in it every day. Started it when he first came up here. I, I was going through it last night. 
reading how he found the mine. Does Dirk know about this journal? Oh, he, he knows about it. He's probably forgotten all about it, though. Why? Because I think I'll need your help. If my hunch is right, we may be able to trap the murderer. Go into town this afternoon. You have friends there who will help you circulate the rumor. I could force a showdown, but I think this will be a better way. That night, darkness obscured the faces of Dirk Malone and Max Simmons as they walked down the main street of Claiborne. Talking excitedly, Dirk occasionally threw glances back over his shoulder. You've got the deed. I tell you, there's nothing to worry about. I'm not taking any chances. If she gets that Monty with a journal and her story, he might get suspicious. Much good it'll do him. You need proof. He can't pin a murder on... I guess we'll return. Yeah. I watched her leave with Mrs. Fleming. I went over to Hannah McGavin's. I get it. And Doc Fleming's at the cafe, huh? I made sure of everything. Now, wait a minute. Yeah, it's so dark I can't make out the doorknob. Doorknob? We aren't taking chances on the door. There's a window over here. Yeah. Now, right here. Now, listen, I'll climb in here... Help me with this window, will you? Now, quiet now. Yeah. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> Give me your hand, Mac. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you were right. The place is deserted. Oh, oh. Shut up. I got you in here to help me. I can't see in the dark. Stand still a minute or so till your eyes get used to it. Where are you going, Molly's things will be in the room next to this one. That's where we'll find that journal. Why, you couldn't have thought of it before. I don't know. If you had everything planned out, all there'd be to it would be getting the deed. Yeah. And don't forget, if it hadn't been for that $10,000 I owe you, I wouldn't be prowling around here in the dark. Oh, getting cold feet, huh? And you were the one who could commit a murder and do a girl out of a rich mine all in the same day. Yeah. I should have known better than to get into this. You're getting a third of the mine? Now shut up. Where would she be likely to keep a book? Ah. This is it. You got it. I never expected she'd leave it on top of the pack. Come on, let's get out of here before someone hears us. I've heard all I need to convict you, Dirk. Put your hands up. What? You're under arrest in the name of the Queen. Where'd he come from? Make a dash for the window. No, no, you don't. Tap for the king. <laughs> the lantern. Knock like the lantern. Oh, get out. Get out. Yeah, that's better. Oh. All right, King. Well, I'll oh. be. Sergeant, why don't you tell me what you was expecting? Because I wasn't quite sure, Doc. That's why I waited. But you heard it all yourself. I heard it all right. And as for you, Dirk Malone, you dirty yellow... I didn't have anything to do with it. He fired the shot. He shot from ambush. You double-crossing... It's true, Sergeant. Listen to me. He forged Pat Malone's signature on that deed. You're in this just as much as I am. Put these handcuffs on them, Doc. Uh, Gladly. I only wish mine was a pleasure of stringing them both up. Well, what made you suspect them in the first place? Well, there were no tracks on the trail, so it was impossible to follow them. I had a hunch when Molly told me about the deed that Dirk was responsible for the murder... When I saw the journal, I was sure of it. Even without examining the signature Dirk forged. If Pat Malone had turned the mine over to his son, he would have mentioned it in that journal. But he didn't. Instead, the pages are full of stories of Dirk's gambling, his losses and his constant visits begging his father for money. All right, you two, get along. It's jail for both of you. Poor Molly's got a heavy burden on her shoulders, but at least she'll have the satisfaction of knowing the man that shot her father will hang. Yes, King, the case is closed. Challenge of the Yukon, a copyrighted feature of the Challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, brought to you every Tuesday at this same time, originated in the studios of WXYZ Detroit. The characters and events in tonight's drama were fictitious. Bob Height speaking. This is the Michigan.